And it is, it's fascinating to me, you know, that as late as 1990s, they found this endocannabinoid system in our body. Like that kind of just blew me away when that was part of the research too, was, you know, medical costs looking at this. And then it's like, wait, this endocannabinoid system that was named after the cannabis plant because it has the same chemical compound properties and it's running through our body. It's, it, that's fascinating to me. And that it wasn't discovered till the 1990s. Wow. The name was given. And then the fact that you can look at these CB1 and CB2 receptors that are in our body and work with and complement and the, the cannabinoid products actually trigger and start working together with that endocannabinoid system. So I was like, done. Like this is, this to me was um, a way to say, I have a responsibility to work with the traditional medical community, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, life sciences, um, as you know, that we worked with in, um, in, in, at IBM, you know, big pharmaceutical customers, big healthcare providers, payers um, all over the place. But wouldn't it be interesting if they found the value of this as well? Because as I said, what's coming through in the transformation of healthcare is the patient as a consumer doesn't want to be addicted to opioids, doesn't want to have to take a $150 pill, or if they have to take that, they at least want to augment it with something else that's going to help bring them down the total cost of their treatment and be safe and effective. Uh, and so as you research that, it just was, to me, a no-brainer responsibility to take that on and to see, could I keep that conversation going from the traditional side uh, and the less traditional side, the more, the more innovative side of the cannabinoid industry. Um, and there's a lot of people creating good products in this industry. What I find is people are very supportive because at the end of the day, we all want cannabis to be, to go mainstream and to be adopted, like you said, to give it legitimacy, to make it adopted. We don't want, I don't really love the, um, the old system of, you know, thugs in suits selling weed. It's not what it is. THC and weed as we know it, marijuana, was both recreational and medicinal. CBD is a pure compound, a phytocannabinoid that's in the plant that is really for medical purposes because it helps work with the endocannabinoid system. So CBD isn't like, oh, I'm just going to go get me some CBD and get high and have fun. No, it's CBD is actually a healthcare product. And that's what helps people to understand that they can integrate it or, or put it together with current products they're using and make incredible leaps and bounds toward their health. And while we're not allowed to say it heals, it's interesting that the whole endocannabinoid system is called a healing system, right? It, it works to make sure that um, with the en endogenous cannabinoids in the system and the receptors that it has and the hormones that it triggers, it works to make sure we reach homeostasis, homeostasis which is balance. It's balance of the body and it kicks in when it sees abnormalities. It kicks in when it says there's some kind of physiological effect going on with this body. We need to... Um, get the endocannabinoid system active. And so isn't it nice that we can use cannabinoids or products with safe cannabinoids in it to support and help accelerate the, the healing and the wellness that our body can have. And so I love speaking with, um, with you know, kindred spirits like yourself and the people in this community who get it, everyone gets it. And it's our job to kind of help um, the other side of healthcare uh, who's looking at, I think, more economic factors or forgetting the patients at the center of all of this. Uh, it's, to me, I love that challenge every single day. Uh, sometimes it hurts because there is a, there's a power struggle there, but the fact of the matter is we're all doing it for the right reason, and, and that's what keeps us going as a, as a team.